Hi, and welcome to the GearWire Labs. I'm um, Dan Augusto. We're taking a look at the Minimoog VA from Arturia. Um, if you saw our last podcast, podcast 016, we were ab able to take a look at uh, 1974 Minimoog uh, D model. And this is basically almost, almost the same exact architecture as that. So if you get a chance to check that out, definitely do that. So here is the Minimoog. We have it loaded up on our uh, Dell Dimension. Uh, super fast computer, and uh, it's running inside of uh, Cakewalk or Sonar 5. And um, let's take a look at it. All right. So up here, um, these knobs are, are labeled controllers. Uh, up here is a tune knob, um, glide knob. Basically, that controls uh, if you turn the glide on, that controls how fast it glides uh, to every other note. Mod mix, we'll get into that later. Uh, our oscillator bank, this is a three oscillator um, synth, mono synth. Um, unlike the synth that it was rebuilt from, uh, the actual Minimoog, uh, this has an extra LFO, a dedicated LFO. On the Minimoog, unless you uh, were hooking up a different LFO, you had to use oscillator three as your only source for modulation. Um, over here we have our mixer, various on off knobs. Here you can turn on and off the volume knob. Over here, we got our external input. On the VA version of the Minimoog, or the v, uh, virtual uh, version of the Minimoog, um, there's three positions to the switch. Let's see if we can get in on that. Right now, we have it off. You can also turn it halfway on. Basically, what that's doing is, is emulating the trick that you could do with the original Minimoog. Um, the Minimoog had a, both a low impedance and a high impedance output. What you could do is take the low impedance output put it into the external input, and then uh, take your out of the high impedance output just like you normally would with any keyboard. Basically what that allows you to do is to drive the preamp of the external input and add a little bit more uh, grit to your signal. So you could also turn it on. Um, we're just going to leave it off right now. Oscillator 2 on. Also there's a noise generator. This uh, can be added for like sort of percussive elements to the sound. Um, you could also using the knob over here, the mod mix, instead of using all of uh, oscillator three, you could use the noise as sort of a modulation. It doesn't really sound all the, like, like a modulation effect like you would expect, um, but it does add a certain um, character to the sound that uh, is classic Moog. And of course, oscillator three on and off. Um, filter section is up here. Uh, you can turn on filter modulation. Basically what that'll do is it'll modulate the filter off oscillator three, whenever you turn the mod wheel up. Uh, filter emphasis, that's basically resonance control. Amount of contour, that controls how much of basically the envelope that you set for this. The envelope is a little different than you'd see on, on modern synths. Basically, you only have attack time, decay time, and sustain level. Decay time is basically a release. Uh, attack time, standard sustain level is basically after the decay, how high it's going to be. We have basically the same thing down here. Um, and, and that's the loudness contour. It'll basically shape the amplitude envelope. Um, output, we got a few, uh, well, we got the unison knob. Basically, that sets uh, the oscillator one and two to the same frequency no matter where you have the, the fine-tune knob set. Um, volume, A440, in case you want to tune uh, the oscillator. It's not really, not really needed because you can see the readings on there, but it's nice to have. Uh, and then voice detune. Here's a section that you're definitely not going to see on any classic uh, synth. Um, what that allow allows is sort of a natural detuning of the oscillator, sort of so what, something you'd get out of an older synth. And also, if you, have, if you do have it set all the way down, there's a polyphonic switch. And this basically makes the Mini Moog uh, polyphonic. So what I've done is I've loaded up a patch that uh, has polyphony on it. Um, if we play this chord, as you can see, we have polyphony and it's a polyphonic mini Moog. Very nice addition. If we turn that off, it goes back to being a mono synth. Another great thing that the virtual uh, mini Moog has from Arturia is you click up there, it opens up, and you get a whole modulation section. Um, you got your modulation routing up in the top left. Um, you get three. You can set. Looks like uh, six different um, 
modulation sources. You got a separate LFO and arpe uh, an arpeggiator, and then an effect se uh, section, uh, chorus and delay. And you also have a MIDI sync knob so you can sync with your host tempo. So let's start uh, messing with some of these settings and see what kind of sounds we can get. So this is what we're working with right now. Okay, if we take a look at our, our GUI, we can see we got, and, and also listen to what we got, we got some delay going on. I'm going to turn that off for now. It's a mono sound. Um, and let's say I want the LFO to modulate our filter cutoff frequency. Up here, we already have an L our LFO mapped to emphasis which is basically uh, the, filter, uh, the filter resonance. What I'm going to do is select the destination for that and change it to cutoff. Turn up the rate of our LFO and we can hear that modulation going on. Make it go faster. Let's look at some of our other controllers here. See we got the oscillator 3, we can set that uh, to modulate any of our, our uh, destination. Um, let's see, envelope generator, both the filter and the amplifier. Let's map the wheel to something. So we're going to map the, the uh, modulation wheel. Let's set that to, well, here's another thing that they have. Uh, frequency modulation, so we can uh, frequency modulate the oscillator. So I'm going to set it to the frequency modulation of oscillators one and two. Okay, and if I, I'm getting sort of like an on and off effect, that's because our uh, oscillator three is set to a square wave. I would like it to be a triangle, triangular wave. So we can see how that happens. If I'd like that to go faster, I can just raise the octave of oscillator three. We're so starting to get sort of a ring modulator type sound. Let's take a look at, let's cl uh, close down the top area and take a look at our oscillators here. Uh, we have one set to a ramp and one set to a square wave. I'm gonna set one, oscillator one, to uh, sort of a, a, between a triangle and a ramp and oscillator two, I'm gonna set to a pulse or a, a narrow rectangular uh, pulse wave. They're both set to 16, which is the octave range. I'm gonna set oscillator two up an octave. All right, so that's, I, I like that sound a bit. I'm gonna raise oscillator one volume in the mixer section. Also, if we look here, we can see that this particular patch was set to um, add the output to the external input, so we are getting an extra bit of overload. Let's see if we take that out. And so if we add that sort of distortion, a bit fatter of a sound. Over here, we also see a soft clipping uh, switch. I'm going to turn that on. We're starting to get more of a full sound on our hands. I'm going to raise the filter emphasis just a bit so our modulation that we did to our filter gets, gets a, a bit more intense. That's a little bit much. All right. Add a bit more contour to our uh, envelope generator for the filter. Lower the attack time so it's a bit sharper. We can make it slower. Look at about there. Raise our attack time for the um, volume. And also, since we have decay on, I'll raise that up. 
get a little bit of the K on there. So one thing we didn't take a look at was the glide control. Very important in the classic Mini Moog sound. Um, first, I'm just going to take a look at how the notes are triggering. Uh, in the classic Mini Moog, you, if you hold down a low note um, and then play a high note, it doesn't trigger until you take your uh, fingers off the lower note. So we're going to see if that's how it's going. Yeah, that's how it's going. In this, in, when, when I play with Glide, I usually like to change this, and this is an option we get with our uh, modern rebuilds. So what I'm going to do is go up to this section and hit the playing mode drop down. So we can either have it trigger off the low, which it's set to standard, trigger off the highest note you're playing, or trigger off the last note. That's where I really like to have it for my personal uh, preference for performance. So now, now we don't have that problem. So I'm going to turn on the glide control that's down here by our pitch bend and modulation wheels. And turn up our glide time up here on the controllers. Right. Turn it even higher. All right, so let's turn it up all the way and see how long it takes to go on. That's a good long glide time. And so one thing I want to take a look at is uh, how you get some of the weirder noises now that we got the glide time up. I'm going to turn the noise on. The noise is on. I'm going to turn it up. The keyboard control on our filter. Down our other oscillator. That's how you get some of the more interesting spacey sounds. You turn up the noise and have your keyboard control on the filter and turn up the glide time. So that's the Mini Moog VA. I hope you've enjoyed it. Also, make sure to check out uh, the hardware shootouts we have on our latest Crosstalk 06, 016, so Crosstalk 16. Uh, so thanks for checking us out.